Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today's movie that I will be reviewing, Godzilla vs. Kong. But before I get into my review, if you are enjoying the content, please subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. It helps me out a lot and I greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't seen Godzilla vs. Kong, consider this your spoiler warning. Now, let's get on to the review. So before I continue on the good, the bad, and the ugly of this movie, I want to just say I was entertained. I did find the movie entertaining for what it's worth. It felt like some of the scenes like this movie was shot in a way that I would be at Hollywood Studios theme park and it would be in um, one of those uh, rides that you get in and you're kind of in uh, kind of like a roller coaster setting. But if you've ever been to, to Universal Studios Hollywood, you know that you get into these little carts or whatever, and it's all controlled by hydraulics, and you're kind of just in, immersed in what they're showing you. And that's how it felt. A lot of the scenes, the way the, the camera was, was positioned and, and just how the shot flowed, it almost, it gave me the same feel as if I was at that at Universal Studios Hollywood. So yeah, take that for what it's worth. I mean, I still enjoyed it, but it was just my little observation and just how I felt and how my memory reacted to it. So if, if some of those scenes were in a ride in Hollywood, let's say for the King Kong, you know, the Godzilla versus Kong ride, I think it will, it will work great. So maybe that's what they're shooting for, for something that they'll add to a ride. Cause I do believe there is a King Kong ride at Universal Studios and they definitely have the space to add something like the minions. If you're uh, again, familiar with Universal Studios, there's a ride there. There's all the rides there for the most part. Even the Harry Potter ones are done in a way where it's all, while well, the Harry Potter ones are an actual like roller coaster. Uh, there are some in there that you sit, you're in place and it's all hydraulic. So it definitely felt like one, but anyways, little diversion over. So let's dive into the good. So the good that I found from this movie, I thought the fight scenes were amazing. I enjoyed them. They were full of action, destruction. The way the power struggle went from Godzilla to Kong and you know, back and forth and you didn't know who was gonna come on top. It was super entertaining. I thought the, the way again, like I said earlier, the way it was shot was was good. I thought it was really, really good. It made me a little nauseous, nauseated at some points, just because there was, there was instances where it cut too much, too quickly and too fast and too abruptly, but it wasn't, I would say it was probably like two or three shots, not for the most, for most of the fight scenes, but from the beginning to the, to the end, it's it, it kind of um, the fight scenes and just the drama of them. It it, it it quickens the pace of the movie. If 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 that would be a correct assessment to it, so it makes the I and I completely enjoyed the fight scenes. Another thing that was good about this movie was some of the CGI. It, you know, just like with the the fight scenes, just the way with how we found out that the where Kong is being held at in the beginning is like a simulation. It's just a dome where they are replicating an environment good to, to Kong, to, to ha have him happy, to have him contained, even though he, Kong is smarter than we think and that anybody believes and he understands he's in an, uh, in a encasement. Um, but I found all, most of the CGI good for this movie. So let's get into the bad. 
With the bad, I thought some of the CGI was pretty bad. When it's, it, I don't know, maybe they ran, ran, ran out of money towards the end. You know, maybe they had a different studio do some of the CGI. But when Kong is being transported through the water and you see some of the water hitting his hand and, and, and kind of misty, you could see how horrible that CGI was. Um, so, and it's spotty like that. So it's not overall throughout the whole, like you can't notice it for long periods of time, but you could definitely see it in periods of time. Like it come up on you and it'll take you out of the movie a little bit. Cause you recognize like, Hey, that didn't look all that clean, all that crisp from what is already being shown. So again, maybe this is due to post-production whatever it was you could definitely tell at least i was so let me know if you guys could tell down in the comments some of the cgi problems another thing that i found that was bad was the story the story was just super basic and maybe they're getting it from the source material but i think they could have done it a little bit different i thought the the concept of it was I don't know. It, it didn't explain to me why, you know, King Kong, I mean, why Godzilla was so perturbed that he was destroying people. Like, I know that the movie makes it a point to tell me that all oh, the, the humankind is trying to replace him as a power source, but it doesn't, it doesn't let me know how that is possible. So if something from outer space, like, uh, you know, EMP or something happens, does that, would that make you know godzilla go crazy and start attacking people so the the premise of what made godzilla after he's for decades now he is a, pro a protector of mankind for something as basic as oh they're trying to replace uh kong and that's the reason i mean uh, godzilla and that's the reason that it causes him to go crazy i mean that is so light like take away take take yourself away from the you know godzilla kong universe it would be something that mankind definitely does you know if if we found out there were these monsters that were you know just let's just take dinosaurs let's just say not even in a universe where, where godzilla and king kong exist let's just go and say dinosaur dinosaurs came back and you know reanimated or came back to existence here in the 21st century we would definitely develop weapons in some kind of you know power source i guess or something to control these dinosaurs that's just what we do so to kind of make that the center of Godzilla versus Kong, like, oh, you know, Godzilla doesn't want you guys to develop some kind of evil power, you know, uh, and that's the reason why he comes and, dest and destroys it. Even the doctor that made the, 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 the mega Godzilla, he was doing it as a response to Godzilla. That way they don't have a reliance on Godzilla and they could kind of protect their own selves. So the, the whole story was really, like I said, it was so whimsy and so fragile that, it, you know, I just took myself out of the story. I didn't follow the story anymore because I just, it was too basic. It was just too ridiculous too. Like you were making something out of nothing. So another thing that I found was the destruction. If, if there was, if a city got level, I think it was Hong Kong, but that city was destroyed completely utterly and how anyone could be like cheering after that give me a break millions of deaths would happen it would be i mean they there was nothing left the sky rises the way it was falling i'm talking about trillions of money the destruction to a city within a few minutes is reason enough to destroy these creatures both kong and godzilla there is no way that any government in any part of this world would ever be okay in saying, you know what, they fought, but it was for the betterment of mankind. No, these are weapons of mass destruction, both Godzilla and Kong. And for us to be like, oh yeah, you know, awesome. And I know this movie has done great in China and overseas, and I think it's doing okay here in the States, but 
I think more or less the reason it was doing more is doing really good in China is because Godzilla is a cultural thing over there. I mean, they it's one of the things that they are most they are proud of that it not only jumped borders. I mean, we kind of adapted it and it's become part of our culture also. So, I, you know, that's one of the reasons why it's doing is why it's performing so well. But yeah, I mean, just the destruction was on another level, and I don't, I, I, it, it's just too much. So the ugly in this movie is the acting. I'm sorry, I, 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 I again, I don't like to go into reviews and and try to pick out bad things, but the acting from the girl from the Stranger Things, from the scientist from our heroes, from the little girl that is talking to Kong, from the adopted mother of the little girl, just everyone. I didn't like anyone. And even that podcaster, he was super, uh, you know, eccentric. He was so erratic. He just the way they, the way they led up from them meeting to where they ended up in Hong Kong was, I mean, come on. And the, the, like I said, the acting, the interactions, it was just so, they spent a lot of money on the, the, the CGI. Maybe they didn't pay these actors enough to act, but the acting was so subpar. If I had a great, the, the acting would be like C minus because they phoned it in, in this movie. They, they tried at some points but maybe they realized that this movie was garbage and I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, in, in saying that I'm fully aware that this movie is going to make, I don't know how much it, 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 it took to produce this movie and maybe it'll make a profit, but I just thought the acting was horrible, not only from, from the, the, the stars of the movie, the, the extras, the, just everything, everything didn't flow. And again, for me, I just focused on the action, the CGI. I didn't focus on the story. I didn't focus on the just the unrealistic aspects of this movie. And when the actors were acting, I just took myself out of it and said, hey, this is just what the presentation is. And it is what it is. And I try to enjoy the movie for what it actually is, just a CGI fest of presenting Godzilla and Kong. And I didn't have a problem with Kong and Godzilla having human traits, even though I think some critics over blew it. Like they don't have a lot of human traits. I mean, if they're talking about when in the beginning when Kong wakes up and scratches his butt, I mean, have you ever been to a zoo? Have you been to a, you know, a, a, uh, uh, a monkey exhibit or a gorilla exhibit or a silverback exhibit. I mean, they do way worse than that. That seems like human traits. And, uh, you know, if you believe in evolution, they're going to have human attributes or human traits that are, are human mannerisms that they, that they do. But I didn't find that off putting. I didn't even realize it for the most part because I, you know, primates do what they do. Maybe on the Godzilla side was a little bit, but even in that, what? The ending when they don't want to fight no more, when they help each other out? Like, I mean, some animals do that in the wild now. So that criticism, I think is a little bit unfair. But anyways, the acting on the human side, the CGI part, like I said, I loved it. If it was just Kong versus Godzilla, with little bits of human acting, I would have done, I would have enjoyed this movie a lot more. Kind of like the old shows were. It was just a bunch of silence between Kong and, and, and Godzilla. And it would be like the fighting, the destruction, and just little p bits and pieces of humans running around and, and people saying, oh, Godzilla, and stuff like that. I could have done that better than that. And I think they were trying to do that. But at the end of the day, I think corporate got involved and said, no, we need some human talking parts. You don't really not for, you know, Godzilla and King Kong, but that's what I, that, that, that's just my opinion. So overall, um, is it worth going to the movies? I didn't go see this in the movie theater. I completely waited to see it on when it came out on streaming and this weekend it did come out on streaming. And I watched it 
It's a, it's a great movie to watch at a home, you know, on your big screen and surround sound. But to go pay money to go see this in theater, nah, I don't think so. Not, not at least not my money. I know a lot of people are, but I think I judge this movie correctly from the trailers and say, you know what? I think I'm gonna wait this out and 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 you know check it out when it's actually available for streaming. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, I, I I think this is a C C minus if you as far as like for for the for the movie but that is just my take on it i would love to hear your take on it what did you think of this movie were you entertained do you think i'm being a little bit too harsh in my review of this movie and if you don't think i'm harsh enough what are some of your crit crit uh, critiques about this movie or criticisms about this movie so let me know your thoughts down in the comments and like always that's a wrap.